Hello all! Today we are going to talk about biochemistry, a science about molecules and chemical processes related to living organisms. We would like to show you some qualitative reactions by which scientists are able to detect particular types of molecules in different substances. Such qualitative reactions act as agar plates for bacteria in our previous video. They can show you imperceptible things which surround us. And today we will see biomicromolecules. We have a box that contains a few biochemistry experiments, and today we will use some of the provided reagents required for the first experiment. Moreover, we took a box without included ingredients, as we can find potatoes, egg and butter in our own fridge. So, let's take a look inside the BioBranches box, which contains beakers, spoons and pasteur pipettes, gloves, Petri dish, starch, sugar as a control, and also some chemicals. Iodine solution, 1% copper sulfate solution, and 1% sodium chloride solution, which is known as table salt. Nevertheless, we will give you a quick introduction to the topic, but before starting the experiment, we recommend you to go through our lecture. The link you can find in the description below. The first qualitative reaction will demonstrate whether starch is present in any of our samples. Starch is a polymeric carbohydrate consisting of numerous germ glucose units. Glucose is a sweet sugar. Also, it is a mixture of two polymers, amylose, a simple linear structure, and amylopectin, branch-chain polymer. Humans and other animals like the taste of starch-rich food because our organism, with the help of enzymes, degrades the starch into simple sugars and releases stored energy. Later, in this video, we will show you how a human organism digests starch. However, now we will show you how to identify starch in food with a simple reaction. Iodine builds into a long chain of carbohydrates and starch, changes their special form, and therefore the complex starts to absorb light in, of a different wavelength, which gives it intense blue color. However, the color of the reaction can vary from reddish to purple and blue, according to different amylopectin and amylose concentration in the starch. So, let's put our gloves on and get started. First of all, Let's take a slice of potato and some sugar. Drop the iodine solution onto them using the hand pipette. After 5 minutes, as you may see, sugar did not change its color, while the potato became blue. As we can see, starch is present in the potato, but not in sugar. This reaction is even better visible on starch directly. Let's dilute one spoon of starch in tap water. and put several drops of Udid solution. Color become blue, as in previous experiment. However, this reaction is reversible. Let's check what happens with our solution after 20 seconds in microwave. The color of the solution turns white again. It means that complex between iodine and carbohydrate is destroyed. Iodine leaves the complex in high temperature conditions. Today we will test three substances. 
only one of which contains starch. And we will see how iodine qualitative reaction helps us to identify this carbohydrate. From the kitchen, we will take a potato as a carbohydrate-rich product, an egg as a protein-rich product, and a piece of butter, which contains a lot of lipids. To test that, we will dilute one spoon of starch in tap water in the first beaker. In the second beaker, we will place egg white, and in the last, melted butter. After, let's put several drops of the iodine solution in each beaker. As you may see, the color changed to blue only in the first beaker, while in others too, iodine stayed brownish. Therefore, via iodine starch qualitative reaction, you can detect starch in many products. Examine cereals like rice, wheat and maize or beans. For example, favas, lentils, mung beans, peas and chickpeas. Sweet potatoes and white bread also contain starch and will result with blue color together with iodine. So it's easy. Slice your food and add a few drops of iodine. Try it yourself. As we mentioned, human organism starts to digest starch-rich food just after it arrives in our mouth. In fact, we like the taste of the food which we can digest and extract energy. If you will take a bite of wood, you will definitely know that it is indigestible for us. Wood consists of cellulose, which is also a polymeric carbohydrate consisting of numerous germ glucose. However, we do not have enzymes able to break the bones. But we, humans, have a protein enzyme called an amylase. It catalyzes, in other words speeds up, the slicing of starch into simple sugars. This gives us a pleasant sweet taste from the potato. Amylase is present in the saliva of humans and some other mammals where it begins the chemical process of digestion. To separate beakers with starch will help us to illustrate this statement. In one of the beaker, add some of your saliva and mix well, and let's stay for 5-10 minutes. Let it stay on the table for 20 minutes. After, add several drops of your dim to the beaker without saliva. As expected, the solution becomes blue. However, if you will add iodine to the beaker with starch and saliva, the reaction is much less intensive. This is due to a special molecules in our saliva, amylase, an enzyme which catalyzes slicing of starch into simple sugars and gives us pleasant sweet taste from potato. If this experiment do not work from the first attempt, try to increase time and add more saliva. Interestingly, enzymes work differently in various conditions. For example, temperature and pH can affect the speed of the enzymatic reaction, as well as specific molecules known as inhibitors and activators. Let's take three beakers with starch to check how inhibitors and activators work. In the first one, we will add provided 1% sodium chloride solution. In the second one, provided 1% copper sulfate solution. And third, leave without any additional reagent as a control. In all proper scientific experiments, we need a control, because it allows to minimize the changes in all other variables, except the one being tested. In all the beakers, we should add some saliva and wait for approximately 20 minutes. After 15 minutes, 
and your deep solution. We see that in case of sodium chloride, the salt speed up the reaction of amylase on starch, and we almost do not see a blue color. In this sample, almost all starch is broken by amylase. That's why sodium chloride is an activator for amylase. In the sample with copper sulfate, the blue color is more intense, leading us to the conclusion that copper sulfate is an inhibitor for amylase. I hope you enjoyed the experiment. Soon I'll show you the next qualitative reaction presented in the Biobranches Biochemistry box. Make sure to subscribe for more interesting content. See you soon.